thank you for kind introduction and thank you for inviting me to this conference. I'm very happy to be here, but I'm a little nervous now. Uh, I'm Joji Miyazaki, uh, working for uh, NEC Corporation, and also I belong to the National Institute of Advanced in the Story of Science and Technology, ICE, uh, where we are developing an uh, actual quantum imaging machine. Uh, it's a uh, national project in Japan, NEDO, with uh, ICE, Tokyo Tech, Aikawa National University, and Waseda University, and anyways. So, uh, and this is a picture of the, this is a picture of the, just a mock-up, but anyway, we are truly developing an actual quantum imaging machine. And the uh, right-hand side, this picture is the, uh, this is a picture of the uh, eight qubit machine. Uh, anyway, I'm talking about the, uh, our development of actual quantum machine. But I'm not an experimentalist, so I do not, I do not detail, I know the detail of experiments and engineering. So I'm talking about the theoretical point of view of the NEC's approach to quantum learning machine, more uh, developing a quantum learning machine. And uh, in the second half of the, this presentation, I addressed uh, two theoretical studies on this approach. This is uh, what I directly tackle. Uh, first, uh, I'm talking about NEC's approach to quantum modeling from a theoretical point of view. But if you are interested in the engineering point, uh, please see talk by Aiko Yamaguchi. Uh, she is a member of experiment, uh, experimental team in NEC, and she talked at a previous Inca conference last year, and the movie is available on YouTube, so please check that. Uh, first, I'm talking about three points of the NEC's approach. One is theoretical model, uh, second one is qubit platform, and the last one is encoding method. Uh, it may be useful to show that those for DV machine, uh, theoretical model is transfer speedizing model, you know, and the qubit platform is squid, LF squid or uh, flux qubit, and the encoding method is uh, called uh, minor embedding in Chimera or uh, Pegasus and Zephyr graphs. Uh, but I do not talk, discuss the, those four DVM systems because time is limited. Uh, I focus on the NCs one. The first, uh, I'm talking about the theoretical model, that is, car parameter oscillators. But you know this one because the uh, Professor Tsai uh, discussed that in his presentation. But anyway, I explained that again. Uh, that is a nonlinear quantum oscillator with a parametric read neuron field. Uh, you know, the, when we describe the oscillator in quantum mechanics, we use the bosonic analysis and creation operators. Uh, so this is the harmonic oscillator part. But this is nonlinear uh, oscillator, so we need the nonlinear part. Uh, called Carnot linear T like this. And also we have a uh, parametric driving this, uh, this term, and this has a uh, frequency omega p, and this frequency is imposed at uh, this condition omega p over 2 <coughs> is close to omega, how many goes to the point, part. Uh, these three terms are enough to describe the KPO, but we add the uh, additional bias term uh, called coherent driving to discuss quantum annealing. And we move to the frame at the rot rotating at the, this frequency uh, to simplify this model and extract the essential of this model. Uh, and then the Hamiltonian becomes <coughs> like this. Delta is the difference between the omega and omega p over 2 plus k. And uh, there are stationary terms like this. Uh, this is the model what we focus on what we are working on. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you know that this is a KPO, but what we want to know is how we use KPOs, these systems, for quantum annealing. Uh, this is the basic scenario. Uh, uh, basically, when uh, we consider, uh, we uh, execute quantum annealing, we gradually some parameter, we gradually change some parameter 
In this case, QAV is KPUs, oh, sorry, QAV is KPUs, we gradually increase pump amplitude, uh, denoted by P, and from zero to some finite value. So the initial Hamiltonian is described like this, uh, and the ground, its ground state is the vacuum state. Uh, and the regular function is described like this, and we gradually increase the pump, and then the state is squeezed like this, and when we increase the pump much larger than delta, we obtain uh, the, the state described like this, and this is the uh, ground state for the large pump, this is a superposition of coherent states, alpha zero plus minus alpha zero. This is a cat state uh, discussed in the uh, professor size presentation. Uh, and to use the, this state for quantum annealing, we encode an ising spin, two states of ising spin, in the two coherent states of the cat state, like this, up and down. Uh, we, we, we add a bias, coherent drive, like this, and for example, it, when, if it's one is positive, the ground state is close to the, uh, one of the coherent states, alpha zero, and then the system is like this. So we uh, find that the solution is upstate, like this. So what about the coupling? That is an important point to execute the quantum annealing to solve some problem. Uh, we add some linear coupling between two KPOs like this, and uh, for example, if GIJ is negative and epsilon i is positive, epsilon j is negative, then the uh, system becomes uh, like this after uh, increasing the pump, and then we obtain a solution, KPI is up, KPJ is down, uh, like this. Okay, uh, this is a basic scenario of quantum annealing with KPOs. Uh, so, but what we want to do is to build a quantum annealing machine, so uh, we need to implement, physically implement this method. To this end, uh, we move to the qubit platform that is just have some promising calculators uh, called JPOs. Uh, what is JPO? That is, simply speaking, that is superconducting circuit, more specifically, a squid or a shishanted squid treated by a modulated magnetic flux. Uh, the magnetic flux is uh, generated by an uh, AC current in another line like this, and the uh, oscillating magnetic flux, flux uh, leads to parametric oscillations in the signal in this, this circuit. Uh, this circuit is effectively described like this. This is a uh, roof structure here, and uh, uh, there is uh, one branch has a Josephson junction with the Josephson, effective Josephson, a GT multiplied by EJ sigma, and the other branch has the oscillating, oscillated uh, Josephson energy. And then the Hamiltonian for JPO is described like this, uh, and this third term is effect of a homogenated magnetic flux, and uh, you expect that this corresponds to a pump field. And this system has degrees of freedom, Q, electric charge on capacitor, and phi, superconducting phase across squid, like this. Uh, and this is, for now, so, so far, this Hamiltonian is classic one, uh, but we move to the quantum one version of this Hamiltonian with button representation using this mapping, uh, standard mapping, where n is the number of Cooper pairs, and we also move to the rotating frame at P over 2, uh, as in the KPO case, and then we obtain this Hamiltonian. Uh, EC is a charging energy and omega is a frequency in this circuit. Uh, and note that the important point, or some tedious point, is the ground state in the long frame, uh, original system, correspond to the highest energy state in the rotating frame. This is the, some artifact of uh, this expression, so we, I, I add minus sign uh, to convert uh, the system. So uh, this minus eight JPU has a ground state uh, correctly correspond to the ground state in the lower frame. Anyway, you can find that this has the same form of a KPO one. Uh, so we can generate the KPO with using JPOs. Uh, 
And this is just a theoretical idea, but we can implement that. Uh, also, some many groups implemented that, but NEC also implemented that with collaborators and reported in this paper, but I'm not an author of this paper, but I introduced this one. Uh, in this paper, some, pa uh, some results are reported, but one of them is a single KPO is generated physically. Uh, this is the main result. Uh, that figure, this figure showed that this plot is the car coefficient K, and this is the photon loss rate. And in this regime, uh, the horizontal axis is the flux bias. Uh, I did not discuss the flux bias, but anyway, in this actual circuit uh, system depends on the flux bias. And for the large flux bias, car coefficient is much larger than photon loss rate. So this indicates that the system is in the quantum regime, so we can generate uh, truly quantum car parameter oscillator in the circuit. And next, uh, sorry, I skipped the coherent dri generation of the coherent, dri coherent driving, but we can generate the coherent driving in circuit. And, and next, I discussed the coupling of two JPOs. Uh, we implement that with the capacitive <coughs> coupling like this. And uh, we need a, a condition that the two JPOs have the same pump frequency. That means that omega p1 equals omega p2. If not, uh, rapid oscillation hinders coupling. But this is the condition for the frequency, but there are another degrees of freedom. The constant part of the phase, uh, constant part of the phase, and we change the pump phase, uh, sorry, the relative pump phase, uh, that is constraint, uh, constant difference in the pump phase between the two JPOs. Uh, we can tune that uh, and uh, that corresponds to tuning the coupling constant. Uh, this is a quantum Hamiltonian in the Boston Equal representation in the rotating frame at this uh, frequency uh, that is composed of JPO1 and JPO2 and the coupling term. And the coupling term, depending on the uh, relative pump phase, theta p. So, for example, we set theta p equal to zero. Uh, the coupling constant is, is just g, but if when we set theta p over 2 set to pi, uh, we can change the sign of the coupling. It is very interesting and important point. And this Hamiltonian corresponds to the interacting KPOs. And we can, uh, and these two interacting KPOs are also implemented by NEC and collaborators, uh, in, and the result is reported in this paper. Uh, and we can uh, obtain the correlation consistent with theta p. Uh, this figure shows that result. Uh, this is the probability of the state, obtained state at the final state of the annealing. Uh, and then uh, for theta p over 2 equals 0, in that case we obtain the up up or down down state. So this means that two. Uh, JPOs have the positive correlation, uh, and when theta p over t equal pi, we can obtain the anti-correlation, the up down or down up. So uh, consist correlation consistent with, with theta p are observed in experiments. So this is the coupling, just the two KPOs, but we and need a more larger system to solve some non-trivial problems with quantum annealing. So what about larger systems? <coughs> to discuss that point, we need to consider the encoding method. And for that, we adopt a lechner hock scheme. Uh, and this is collaboration with, uh, in collaboration with PartyQC. But uh, what I'm talking about is just very basic parts. So this is not directly related to our collaboration. Uh, and anyway, the LHC architecture is a candidate for Curious, uh, sorry, Curious Network quantum annealing, uh, and also that is utilized for a gate based quantum computation. Uh, in this architecture scheme, party of multiple logical qubits are encoded in each physical qubit. This is a very important feature, and also uh, no couplings of distant physical qubits. This is very uh, sorry, advantage of this scheme implementation. But for the interaction of physical qubits are needed. This is a disadvantage. This is a difficult point to be implemented. 
But anyway, the Hamiltonian of the LHC scheme uh, is the architecture is described like this. Uh, GRD is a uh, coupling in the logical Hamiltonian, what we saw, try to solve. But in this Hamiltonian, that is mapped to the long tunnel field. And we uh, additionally have the formally coupling constant as a constraint. Uh, and if this product is one for any brackets, uh, we need to consider this forwardly coupling in any bracket in this system. Uh, and for any bracket, oh, for any bracket, uh, this product is one. Uh, we can map this Hamiltonian to the uh, sorry no uh, ground state of HLHZ for uh, is mapped to that of H logical. So we can solve the problem uh, described in the logical Hamiltonian. And also, the, another important point is multiple interactions of logical qubits can be encoded. Uh, I do not discuss that. It will be discussed in the Professor Lechner's talk tomorrow. Uh, anyway, what we want to do is to build a quantum editing machine. So for that point, uh, how do we implement the four interaction qubits? This is an important point. And next. Uh, sorry, uh, but just theoretical idea to implement the HC architecture has been already reported where GPOs are used like this. The system is like this. For, there are four GPOs and uh, center of, uh, the, uh, the coupler. This is a coupler for four GPOs. And the coupler is a single Jacobs interaction or C channel one. And so how is the uh, forward interaction uh, realized? With this coupler, uh, simply speaking, no linearity of the coupler uh, that is from Jacobs injection generates the forward interaction. But this is a too simple explanation. But anyway, this is the essence of the coupling of a forward coupling of this circuit. And we need a condition of pump frequencies from, uh, pro that protects the forward interaction. The con this is an extension of the two body case. Uh, in the forward case, we set the condition omega p1 plus omega p2 equal omega p3 plus omega p4. That is the sum of the pump frequency for the left side, uh, JPO uh, located in the left hand side of the coupler is equal to the sum of the frequency uh, of the JPOs for the right hand side of the coupler. And also the interaction is tunable with phase difference between pumps as in the two-body case. But the uh, uh, maximum strength is mean, uh, limited by uh, circuit parameters. This is uh, what we uh, what I address later. So uh, we expect that it will be implemented physically. But and, and, and of course, uh, in fact, we successfully implemented for the coupling. But uh, so far, we have not published the paper, so I cannot talk about that detail of that. Anyway, uh, there is a press release like this. And also, we have already eight qubit machine uh, based on the LHC architecture. And we jointly research this uh, machine with uh, Tohoku University. Uh, we have the uh, eight qubit system in our lab in Tsukuba. Tsukuba is near Tokyo. And uh, the member of Tohoku University uh, in Sendai, Sendai is uh, a little far from Tokyo. Uh, the member uh, accesses the eight qubits machine via internet, and then they send some program to solve uh, with eight qubit machine. Anyway, uh, and I hope uh, we report this study in the near future. Anyway, I summarize the NC approach. Uh, NC approach is KPOs and the LHC scheme are pieces of a new method of quantum annealing. KPOs are ca generate cat state where an easing spin is encoded. The LHC scheme tests a trees cubo and a higher order one only with the nearest neighbor interaction, but for the interaction that required. And JPOs is the last piece of this scheme and bridge the two pieces. JPO works as KPOs, and the forward interaction can be implemented with JPOs. And NEC implemented interacting KPOs, forward into couplings, and an 8 qubit system. This is the NEC approach. And next, if I have a time, uh, I explain, I uh, quickly 
uh, mentioned the theoretical, two theoretical studies on this approach. One is the spin representation of KPOs. Uh, I published a paper on this study. <coughs> this is study based on the theoretical model uh, in our approach, KPO. You know that uh, KPO is described like this Hamiltonian uh, and uh, adding the <coughs> interaction uh, to describe, uh, to solve, to embed the problem in the KPO network. But yeah, I understand, we understand uh, this method, but what is the relationship between this method and conventional QA? Conventional QA here means the quantum annealing based on the transfer speedizing model. Uh, I think we are familiar with the spin model more than the Bosnian system, so it may be useful to represent uh, our new method, KPO with Q, uh, QA with KPO, uh, in terms of spin systems. It will be useful. So the aim of this study is clarifying how QA with KPO can be described in terms of QA based on spin, and as a method, we use the variant of the host time framework of transformation. And as a result, we obtain the model with spin S operators, that is simple models that qualitatively reproduce the behaviors of KPOs, and we can clarify the roles of parameters of KPOs in quantum learning. Uh, Holstein framework of transformation is a traditional one uh, that maps the spin operator to the Bosnian operators, like this. Uh, in this transformation, in this mapping, S Z equal S corresponds to the vacuum state. As a state with S equal S corresponds to the vacuum state in the Bosnian representation, and also S plus is mapped to like this. Uh, and uh, the square root is not so easy to treat, so we, we expand this square root like this, and we truncate uh, this expansion to focus on the uh, vacuum state or low lying excited states. And we modify the, this HAM transformation to apply this, this transformation to uh, quantum description. Uh, the first step is to swap X and Z like this. I mean, the, we use the other, another gauge to represent spin operators. Sx becomes Sz, Sz becomes Sx. And to co preserve the commutation relation, Sy becomes minus Sy. And thanks to this transformation, the spin state for Sx equal S corresponds to the vacuum state. This Sx equal S state is the initial state for the transfer uh, nodes, anyway, the conventional QA. And the vacuum state is the initial state of our K QA with KPO. So we can uh, map the uh, initial state between them. And the second step is to expand the square root in powers of A A over 2S at alpha square over 2S, not zero. Uh, alpha square is something like a parameter and set to a semi-classical value of the average of atom number. And we focus on states where this average is equal to alpha square. Uh, that means the yeah, anyway, we focus on this state. And then the transformation becomes like this, Sx equals S minus A dagger S, and S minus like this, and we uh, expand this uh, square root like this. But we use, actually use, what we actually use is an inverse transformation uh, that maps uh, some function of the Bosnian operators to the spin operators like this. The, uh, the terms in the, our KPU Hamiltonian for example, A dagger A is mapped to some spin operators like this. Uh, and uh, A dagger plus A is mapped to like this. But this is uh, some expansion that we truncate and we focus on the first order of time anyway, in this case. Uh, and we assume that the square uh, 2s minus alpha square is positive to uh, treat correctly in the square root. Anyway. We can obtain effective spin model by using this transformation, and this is the resulting spin model. Uh, and we can find the correspondence between the original KPO model and the spin operator uh, spin model. For example, the a uh, 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 coupling of the Bosnian operators corresponds to the coupling of Z, Z component of S uh, spin operators like this. It is, I think, it is natural for us. And important. Interesting point is the tuning. This term is mapped to the transverse field like this. 
and culinary master this nonlinear uh, term of SX. And the pump phase, a uh, pump term, uh, becomes the square of SZ. Uh, so that means this term enhances the bifurcation now in SZ. Uh, in Bosnian represent representation, this enhances the bifurcation uh, and squeezing the two state and enhances the generating the two coherent state. And in the spin representation, SZ uh, is bifurcated. Uh, and so it is a natural correspondence. And the uh, coherent drive is mapped to this long signal field. Uh, and this is another expression of the Hamiltonian. For example, that this is a, just a single KPO case, but we can uh, express this Hamiltonian with spin half, uh, a collection of spin half operators. And in that case, in that case the, this term corresponds to the O2O coupling of spin half operators. And this term is O2 coupling of S sigma x operators. It is interesting uh, term because uh, so a single KPO is enough <laughs> to uh, investigate. But anyway, uh, 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 we need further investigation. Next, uh, we compare the original KPO and uh, obtained effective spin model. Uh, this is the Wigner function of a KPO for a specific parameter setting. Uh, and uh, this, these bottom three uh, figures show, the panels show the corresponding uh, Wigner function for the spin model for different S. Uh, for S equal 1, even for S equal 1, we find a similar uh, Wigner function, but as S increases the uh, function, the shape of the function uh, closer to the original case. And the fidelity, also we can ca calculate the fidelity between the Bosnian and spin model. And as S increases, the fidelity becomes one unity. Uh, I skipped the two KPO case. Uh, and I, I also, uh, I, I only discussed the mean field model in this presentation. Uh, the mean field model of the Bosnian case is like this. This is a mean field term. And corresponding mean field Hamiltonian for spin model is like this. This is the mean field term. MB is the average of the quadrature operator data plus A, and MS is the average of SD. And we find the phase transition of the mean field models. That is between the uh, paramagnetic phase where MB or MS equals to zero, and uh, to the ferromagnetic phase where MB and MS are not zero takes a final value. This is a uh, phase diagram. Uh, and the uh, solid line corresponds to the original KPO phase transition line. Uh, and we can obtain the, anyway, we can obtain phase, we can find a phase transition even in the spin model. But uh, uh, quantitatively, the, the location of the phase transition line uh, has a discrepancy between the uh, original one. But we, as we increase S, the phase transition converges to the, uh, hopefully converges to the uh, true solid line. This is the summary of this section. Uh, we obtained the effectiveness models of KPOs for QA. Uh, the model is spin S, uh, described with spin of S operators, and we can clarify the model rows of parameters of KPOs in QA for, with this model. And we compared KPOs and the effectiveness model and the spin model for large S and small P over K show good correspondence to the Bosnian model. And even when S is small, the spin model qualitatively produces captured features of KPO, for example, bifurcation and phase transition. And the last section is the final section, is the Fobley interaction of JPOs. <coughs> this is a uh, collaboration with Tsuyoshi Yamamoto, who is also the working at NEC Corporation in ICE. But he is an experimentalist. Uh, as this is the, uh, what I showed previously. Uh, anyway, but what we, uh, want, what we want to focus on now is to uh, how do we realize a large coupling constant? Uh, because the implementing to implement the LHC architecture, we need a strong uh, coupling term to satisfy the. Constraint, uh, sorry, constraint 
So we need uh, to realize a large coupling constant. So how do we implement such a large coupling constant? So the aim of our this study is finding forward couplers with a large coupling constant for the LHC architecture. And our study is theoretically examining forward couplers. One is previously coupler, a proposed one. Uh, and also we explore other couplers. And as a result, we propose a generalized coupler and uh, parameter settings that has additional uh, 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 such a proposed one is to have, has additional control knobs to increase the forward interaction, and we can give a, we can uh, show a guideline for setting parameters to increase the forward coupling cost. Anyway, that is a coupler already proposed. That uh, coupler is a single Josephson junction, and each JPO uh, capacity really couples to the coupler. Uh, to, Sorry, each JPO capacitively cups to the JJ. JJ is a coupler. And this is our proposed one. Uh, this has a two branch, two parallel branch, uh, these two parallel branches. And one, is, one has an identical JJs in series like this, and the other one has a single JJ with smaller Josephson energy, where alpha is smaller than one. This is structure like flux qubit. And half a flux quantum of external magnetic flux is threaded through the loop. Uh, this one, phi g is equal to phi zero flux quantum over two. And each JPO capacity couples to the JJ that, as in the previous case. And this structure includes the previous coupler as in a case for n equal one and alpha equal zero. And when alpha equal one over n, this structure is called quartum. This is a special flux qubit. And this structure is used also for nonlinear two-body coupler. So we are inspired by this study, and we apply this structure to uh, implement the four-body coupling of JPOs. And we set alpha close to one way, not exactly equal to one way, to increase the four-body coupling cost. This is the potential of the coupler. Uh, this is for <coughs> this branch. And this term is for this branch. And phi g is said to be phi 0 over 2, then this term becomes like this. The positive uh, sign uh, becomes to plus, becomes plus. And, uh, and we expand this potential up to fourth order. Uh, and uh, we have the coefficient, coefficient for the second one, the fourth order term. And we can tune the coefficients by setting n and alpha. But the previous case, where n equal alpha and alpha equal zero, uh, ejg two equal ejg four. But we can show, we can set the different coefficients by introducing n and alpha. That's this structure. And I just mentioned the outline of derivation. We transform the Hamilton, uh, Hamiltonian, original Hamiltonian, to Hamiltonian for Hobbit interaction. Uh, anyway, the <laughs> but we need we use some. Uh, approximation, and after that, uh, we obtained the effective Hamiltonian uh, practice that includes the four-body coupling, uh, this one, with a four-body coupling constant G4, and that is corresponding to the four-body, uh, sorry, LHC Hamiltonian. And the effective four-body coupling constant is described like this, but I don't this, uh, expertly show the uh, uh, actual dependence of the coupling constant. Uh, on the uh, uh, par uh, circuit parameters. But anyway, G minus prime is an effective coupling constant of a JPO and the coupler uh, via this capacitance. And ECG prime is the capacitive energy of the coupler. And these are coefficients of the potential. So we have three factors involved in the coupling constant G4. One is coupling of each JPO and the coupler. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that should be small. And the other three uh, two are nonlinearity of the coupler. Uh, one is capacitance of the coupler, that should be small to increase G4, and the ratio of GAGJ4 to each G2 should be large to increase G4. So what should be done to increase G4 is that one is decreasing capacitance of the coupler. It can increase the forward coupling constant without increasing the uh, factor that should be small. And the second approach is setting alpha close to 1 over n. It increases this ratio described like this. 
and this is a uh, result uh, resulting for the coupling constant and for n equal we let us focus on the n equal to carb we can obtain the large coupling constant when we set the alpha uh, for example 0 0.4 that, uh, that is larger than the previous case the straight line here and anyway, this is summary of this section so I skip this one and anyway summary of this talk uh, in this approach the quantum annealing is uh, composed of the uh, KPOs, JPOs, and the LC scheme, and we are actually implemented an 8 qubit system. And I also mentioned that two were theoretical studies on this approach. One is being representation of the KPOs, and the other one is forward interaction of JPOs. But anyway, there are many problems on this approach to be resolved. So if you are interested in this approach, please discuss with us, and also please join this study. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, question. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, in several places in your talk, you showed the uh, standard cosine phi Hamiltonian for Josephson junctions. Mm -hmm. um, now, in almost any Josephson junction, we can usually observe um, Josephson harmonics, which are like cosine 2 phi, cosine 3 phi corrections between a few and up to 20%. And they may not be harmful, so we know IBM qubits, um, they make them much more coherent and, um, and improve uh, transmon harmonicity, for instance. But um, my question is, uh, have you ever thought or do you have an intuition on how that the presence of Josephson harmonics, um, say cosine 2 phi up to 5 or 10 percent, would affect your scheme or whether you could use it to, to improve um, some properties? Mm, sorry, you, you mean the, the, the potential is not, uh, should be not the Cosine one, right? Right, so, so in real Jones injunctions, we usually observe like up to 20% cosine 2 phi correction. So we know they, they are there. But um, the question is how would it affect the scheme? Like any schemes that, that are based on the cosine phi uh, 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 You mean that if the potential is not the cosine, this approach should be work, should work or not? Uh, um, yes, so no, just whether you have any intuition uh, whether it would harm the approach or, the, or whether it would actually be useful or? Yeah, of course we, uh, at least I yeah, assume this idealized, ideal one, but if uh, this is not the cosine, uh, yeah, uh, it may generate some additional terms, so the yeah, yeah, actual expression may be different from that shown here, but I think it partially works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. So in your uh, four-body coupler here, I guess you get a whole uh, series of two-body terms as well between each pair of JPOs. Do, 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 they, uh, do they arise or are they magically balanced out or do they depend upon symmetry of the junctions or, or what happens to the two body terms? Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, in general, there are two body terms. But two suppress, or sorry, uh, but to suppress such a two body term, we set uh, <coughs> this condition. This condition, uh, in general, the interaction, the coupling is oscillating, but this condition protects the four body interaction only. So how, how precisely do you need to uh, yeah. uh, observe this condition? What, what is the sensitivity to deviations from this condition? Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know how, how, how sensitive <coughs> it is. Yeah, well, my guess is it will be sensitive. That's, well, maybe I'll leave you with that question. Um, it's an important question to ask. Yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks. Very similar comment because four bodies, you know, very high, higher term mm. coupling must be very weak, and two bodies much, much stronger. Mm. And, uh, you have, really have to cancel out carefully. And, uh, the question is can you do that? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. so. Yeah, that is the motivation to 
propose a new coupler to uh, enhance the forward interaction to uh, not to uh, yeah, in general, the two-body one is a higher order one. Ah, uh, no, the strong one, stronger one than the four-body one. So, so in near new coupling scheme, uh, this can be avoided easier. You can get that. Ah, uh, well, uh, this new four-body uh, This copper focus on the enhancing the forward interaction, so we do not consider the how strong two body ones. So, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so, so the I, question I, is: Is the two body interaction a problem, or it's not a problem? Uh, I think it's a problem. <laughs> At least for implementing the standard LAC scheme. As a theorist, I'm interested in how the two body interactions would affect the result, theoretically. That's an interesting oh, yeah. research topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It may not affect, after all, but it so, uh, you, you mean the, in the. Uh, uh, a small perturbation by the two body term would uh, yeah, affect yeah, yeah. the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that, yeah, if that is small perturbation, <laughs> but I you, think. You should show. Uh, yeah, I, 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 if the, the, the condition of the frequency is precisely uh, satisfied. So, but uh, anyway, that is a little simplified one. So, actual experience may be a little different from that. Any other short, que short question or comment? Yes. The final question is. Can you show the uh, knee field analysis of KPO? Okay. Uh, uh, this, uh, this car looks like the uh, like, uh, entrant uh, transition in the case of uh, the purple line. So, uh, what kind of mechanism? Yeah, that is what I'm interested in also. Oh. Yeah, but uh, so far I do not know what, what, what mechanism works. For. Oh. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, if there is no other urgent question, let's thank him and all the speakers today. And <laughs>